Awesome, welcome to the Rubicon Show. Alex Becker has just put out this massive blog post talking about his plan, what he's building in the metaverse, what he's doing with Neo Tokyo, is he dropping any more coins, any more incentives, and just the long-term vision that he's got and all the perks you're gonna get. I've read it, it's pretty fantastic. I've highlighted the main parts and I wanna walk through it with you if you'd like to. So if you're excited, give this video a like for me and let's jump in. So before we do jump into the actual blog post, I wanted to show you this. So this is the season one version of Alex Becker's NFT. Uh, these at one point were trading at over $200,000, uh, if we go back a lot further. And it's very important to note this because he mentions this in his actual blog post. So you can see the average price here. At the start of the year, just four months ago, was, oh, well, there we go, a 90 ETH. Uh, and now they're at 11 ETH, which is pretty crazy. I also saw a tweet recently, someone saying that this is so underpriced because, and again, don't take any advice from anyone, do your own research. Definitely don't take advice from me on what you should or shouldn't buy, but just use this as education so you can make a more educated decision. Uh, he said that his season one season uh, mints bytes. Now we talk about bytes a lot on this channel. Uh, go check out my other videos if you haven't already. It's the token, the um, ecosystem token of Neo Tokyo, he says he makes $3,000 in just uh, those bytes every single month, plus access to all the biggest founders inside of the actual crypto gaming space um, for just 11 ETH, which is pretty good. If you don't have 11 ETH, that's also fine. This here is the Outer Citizens, uh, which is the season two version, and they're currently at 1.4 ETH, which um, they've only just recently dropped here. Um, if we go all time, it only goes back to April 3, so it could have been something that they've recently just dropped, but they did it in parts. So you build up your actual citizen, you merge them all together. Originally, when they came out, they were going for 3E, 3.5 there, 2.5, 3.3. Now they're down to 1.4, so could be an absolute steal. I personally might be grabbing one of these, um, but you know, here they were, here's one for 1.1, so I wonder if you can actually make an offer and get one low. Um, and you don't get full access with that, but you do get a decent amount. So this is basically Becker's blog post on him saying what his plan is for this entire ecosystem. And it's pretty insightful. I was very um, excited to read this and I feel like it's given me a lot of direction for something that I should be focusing on. Uh, and if you're actually not a part of our Discord already, link in the description down there. We're trying to have the friendliest, most educated Web3 community where we're all there helping each other out building for the long term. So if that sounds exciting to you, which I'm guessing it does, please get into our Discord below. So Becker says he wants uh, to do this, uh, to create this blog, he's putting it uh, up every, once every two weeks, I believe, uh, an easy resource for citizens who have questions about the uh, NT, NT's Neo Tokyo. Long-term future and vision of NT. So. It is my personal opinion that the crypto gaming and metaverse industry will become one of, if not the biggest industry in the world, which is a massive call. Uh, now, not, not, it's a massive call, it's not crazy, I can see it actually happening, but for it to be the biggest industry in the world, like the highest grossing, most money put through, most attention on in the world, it's a massive opportunity, and this is Becker's thesis. Um, he said, at the moment, the market cap of the entire industry is only one-tenth the market cap of Ethereum. Um, and I believe it's just over the market cap of Doge. So you know, everyone knows that's the biggest thesis and it's gonna 20 to 50, and if it's gonna be the biggest industry in the world, it's gonna 100X. Uh, I think it's porn the biggest industry in the world at the moment. I think it actually might be. Um, but if it's, it's, it's really got 100X to get to, to that point. And so if we can invest and build in the right areas, we're gonna 100x our investments and our and our businesses that we make into this Web3 metaverse area. Uh, but that said, most of this industry is just hype and FOMO as well as, as well, so things are extremely volatile. So right now, he talks about people are dropping coins, people are dropping in-game tokens, people are dropping all this stuff, and it's mostly hype, it's mostly FOMO, things go up and pump to the moon, like his uh, season one citizens going for 90 ETH, 100 ETH, and now going for 10 and 11 ETH. People are basically uh, buying the rumor, selling the news. Uh, he basically says, 
Why is this relevant? I'd like you to imagine before the tech boom, so the early 2000s, when the internet, or even before that, then uh, late 90s, was just starting, imagine you had a club of 6,500 builders, investors, company owners, and people actively engaged in the space all working together. Imagine all these people sharing their ideas, projects, strategies, and helping support each other, aka networking. This is what he's trying to build, a massive, like a Soho house sort of thing where everyone comes together, the sharpest minds, like Y Combinator, invest, investors, help each other out, invest in each other's businesses, hire each other, use each other's knowledge and resources, and really build this entire niche together. He wants this to be the heart of it, which I think is a brilliant idea. It's my personal belief that if we focus on building a community on the premise of this, by the time the metaverse boom truly occurs, which he predicts three to five years from now, I'm not sure if you watched uh, Mark Zuckerberg's interview on the Lex Friedman podcast, but Mark thinks that we are going to have photorealistic VR meetings. Uh, so essentially like almost not being able to tell the difference between real life and virtual reality within four years. And so Beck is predicting this to be three to five years that the metaverse boom truly happens. Neo Tokyo will be so far ahead of the curve that the potential benefits cannot even, even be fathomed, which I definitely agree. My vision is a community of 6,500 people all working, building, and preparing for exactly this change in the future of humanity. Very cool. The current NFT meta, now this is important, and its effect on Neo Tokyo. So first and foremost, I do, want, I do not want to point the finger anywhere. Neo Tokyo is down from its peak. The euphoria around it has waned. So that's what we've been talking about. However, I do want to talk about the current meta of NFTs and explain our decision making. So this is what I thought was really insightful. So why we're not currently chasing the meta? Um, and the meta is like the current theme at the moment. Is it like Japanese style anime uh, NFTs? Is it uh, airdropping tokens holders or is it, sorry, is it airdropping holders tokens? Um, like what is currently going on? Is it dog uh, NFT faces? Is it PFP? Is it uh, games in the metaverse? Now, yeah, he says, what is the NFT meta? The NFT meta is currently what is being hyped and chased by people looking to make money in NFTs. In early 21, it was any NFT project. In mid 21, it became 10,000 piece collections, you know, like CryptoPunks uh, and artwork like hash marks. Then it became animal profile photos. Uh, people began valuing NFTs as social status, using them to convey who they are. Project's value was based on how cool it was to have it as your picture. We all know that one, that's a very recent thing. Um, then it became communities and alpha. This is where NT came in and also around uh, where Kongs or similar community-based projects took off at CyberKongs. NT was on the front end of the drop trend uh, with our release of bytes and codes, meaning the, uh, dropping uh, codes were an NFT that you could pick up and bytes were the actual token, which he's talking about. This created a lot of speculation on NT as we were smack dab in the meta. This was not purely intended. He says this was potentially a mistake. However, the current meta has mostly shifted towards drops, whitelists, generating pumps for future drops of tokens or NFTs. The trend is then to get people to lock up their NFTs in order to receive those drops. This is a Ponzi scheme, which is basically promise something in the future, have people have to hold the NFT for that thing in the future, then the thing in the future happens, promise something else in the future, and have everybody else wanting to come in. But what he says is when, when there's no more people wanting to come in once you've reached like max, like a saturation, the price absolutely crashes. Um, he says, to be honest, it very much sucks when people ask what is next. And he says, building up the community and building together is not well received by these people because everyone just wants that next Ponzi scheme promise, which is pretty crazy uh, at the moment. Because if you see those projects that are pumping, it's like, oh, they've got this coming up. That's why you should get in. And then that happens. And then it's like, cool, well, why should I get in now? Well, they got this coming up. It's like, well, I was only in because this thing was coming up and now it dropped and I didn't really get any utility. I didn't really get any value out of that apart from other people wanting that. So it's very, very nascent um, timing for this at the moment. And that's basically what most projects are doing. So this is a Becca highlight here. It's actually not my highlight, but he says, mark my words, what is next? The next meta is years of leader and community driven building to deliver the value I described in part one. The plan as is as I described and has always, have always described, sorry about my reading. Uh, I think sometimes there's an extra word or two in there and other times it's just my reading. But essentially he says, 
community driven building is is what he's saying is the true meta the meta that's going to outlast everything even if you go back to the early tech boom you know you had the uh, pets.com diapers.com they just picked one niche and then did it and then that died out because amazon's just like we'll sell everything it's like these metas shift and change what they actually do even with nfts i remember going through the historic nfts which we've got videos on that channel about that and it's just like cool at first it was like own land second it was own uh, like castles and buildings to put on that land third it was um i like profile photos and then it became like um card games like playing nft card games crypto kitties sort of stuff and it, they followed these metas and that's what happens but he's saying the one that's going to make it long term and not actually dump are the ones that are going to be ones that focus on community and one that's fo- ones that are focusing on building um so, so is it reluctant to tie nt to anything but building for the long term the value of nt has to be the community so he stresses that uh, he basically says he's 150% committed to actually building uh, NT. So this is his full-time focus and a half. Only projects with a rock-solid community vision and behavior will do well after he predicts a massive drop in uh, the NFT world. So I'll read a couple more highlights because we're getting the message here. I have a simple breakdown for the plan over the next, say, three to five years before the boom. Leaders attracting smart people plus community building their own projects and sharing them, plus community building internal projects and benefiting from them, aka crowdsource incentivized building, uh, which equals sustainable, long-term, high-value metaverse crypto gaming community, which is essentially what we're also trying to uh, mirror in our community. If you're not a part of it, please join the Discord below. We'd love to have you in there. Friendly, educated, building for each other and building for the community. Um, A perfect example is how the new Spectre launch pad, so he's launching a launch pad within Neo Tokyo. Another example is the outreach team, so he's a team of outreachers trying to get whitelists constantly for his um, Neo Tokyo uh, community. We're trying to enable the outreach team with a pool system funded by Bytes, their token. He wants other people to fund other projects inside of the community with their own Bytes. Uh, and then we'll come down here. There's a couple more interesting things. He's redoing the tokenomics of Bytes because it wasn't at, it was way too uh, inflationary and he wants it to be more utility on actually, so the price, basically keep the price high and doesn't actually pump because people are making $3,000 worth of Bytes a month then just selling it, they have no use for it. So the, the price is crashing as we all know. Uh, now this phase of NT is over. We're working on a much slicker, almost speakeasy style site. So they're redoing their website, making it more professional. So the future and what is next. Once the foundation of NT is cleaned up a bit, our next priority is enabling people to build. This is the next thing, which is basically having bite pools and incentives and breaking people off into little teams in order to actually build and be incentivized to build. Uh, As for S2, basically what you get is access, um, which you don't get everything that the people paying (laughs) 10 times the price get, uh, but you get access to this. And in conclusion, please do make sure you join us in our Discord uh, and also subscribe here. We'll be talking a lot more on this. We really love uh, these sort of topics and we are trying to build for the long term with Becca uh, and we do appreciate everything he brings to the space. So I'd love to see you in that Discord and in the next video. Thanks for watching.